Hello, hello. Welcome back, y'all. I'm Shana Searcy, and I'm so excited to paint with you today for another watercolor journal day. I am going to be drawing and painting some mushrooms today. I'm in the mushroom mood, so that is what we're going to be doing, and I am going to try to use only, only primary colors to paint this, but it will be very neutral palette. So let's see how that all works out. Let's start first with drawing. So I'm gonna draw at least, let's see, we'll start with one. So don't ask me to name these specific mushrooms. I am not a mushroom expert, but basically this is gonna be the underside. Let's give this a little cap here, okay? Top of the mushroom. And then this one's gonna have a nice, Thick. stem area okay and then we're going to use I'm going to leave a lot of pencil lines in this one I think I'm not going to really erase them and I'm going to let the pencil do some of the work for me instead of ink I'm just going to leave pencil in and just doing some shading underneath so I am going with the direction so of the underside of the cap so the ones that come out at you would be really short or that's how you would view them kind of where the stem meets the cap and the ones that go out to the side you would see more of their length hope that makes sense And of course, I will paint these in and emphasize some of my shadows with paint as well. But there's no rule that says you can't mix mediums. So I am just shading in some of these areas. I don't normally do this, but it just seemed fun. Creating a little texture on the surface. All right, so that's our first mushroom. And then I'm gonna do another really, like a tall mushroom like this. We're not gonna really see the underside of it because this part is below our eye line. And we'll do kind of a medium little stump here. But this one I'm gonna give like long texture to. There we go. And then I'm just gonna, this is probably not how a mushroom actually, like maybe one doesn't exist like this, but I'm gonna give it some little bumps on the top, some warts or whatever these things are called. Like the red ones have this, the white, the very poisonous red cap mushrooms. Just a few. Okay. And maybe actually one off to the side. More three dimensional like that. Beautiful. All right. So let's do one more. I'm going to make it a very wide. You're going to see a little bit of the underside and a really thin, delicate little stem here and maybe I'll do just doing some like flaking off of it there we go and maybe I'll do like a little baby version of this one there we go I'll do another baby version of this one all right that's enough drawing I think Sometimes I do catch the drawing bug. I just like to draw, draw, draw. All right, I'm gonna lighten this one up a little bit, the top of it. There. Let's get to some painting. All right, let me find my brush and, or the brush I wanna use. Let's see, maybe I will 
I'm going to use my Princeton Aqua Elite brush. This is a very stiff brush, um, in my opinion. I'm going to use this size 8 that I have here. Um, and I said I was only going to use primary colors. All right, so let's pull out some primary colors. I like to do this exercise with some of my in-person students where we use primary colors to just paint a neutral painting. Helps with color mixing. Um, so I'm using phthalo blue, magenta, and a diralide yellow as my primaries. And if I want to make, let's start with this mushroom. And I'm gonna make basically browns and grays and, and desaturated yellows as my mushroom colors. So let's start with this first one. I actually, I'm going to start with this one back here. I want to make a yellow, but I want it to be kind of a desaturated orangey yellow. So first I'm going to add a little magenta to it. So now I have an orangish color. And then if I add a little blue, it starts to desaturate it. Let me make sure all of that is in frame for you. And then this would be a great time to swatch out your colors. Sorry about my arm there my go-to swatch right now. So this is like a nice neutral reddish brown, yellowy brown color, honey colored. Beautiful. So I'm going to start with this one. And I'm actually going to paint around these little dots that I put on there. And then I just picked up a little more magenta and I'm going to play into these just wet on wet some striping this way. It's a little wet. It's going to bleed out a lot. I'm going to have to add more later on. Okay. Paint my little base here. So I'm just going to pull out a little bit of color in between. Just a little. It's already started to dry. All right, I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back to it. Let's paint this one in front. Actually, I'm going to jump to this one over here. I want this one to be more of a gray color. So I'm going to start with magenta and blue to make like a purple. See that? So I have a nice purpley color. And if I add just a little yellow to it, it really grays it out. And this one is going to be very light delicate gray. It's going to be lighter at the top. We'll definitely put in a darker color at the bottom. So to get darker, you just have to add more pigment together. So more paint. I've been using very light colors. So making this purple, let's pick up a little yellow over here. And let's just pick up more paint. So you can see the more paint you use, the darker the color you can get. Putting in a little more yellow. And now I'm going to just kind of come along the bottom here.
And I forgot we have these little baby mushrooms too. So those, and they're similar to this one. So they're gonna get the same color treatment. So I have some of this lighter color over here. So you can do a lot with a little is my whole point. Um, a lot of people when they're first starting out really love to buy the convenience colors and I totally get it. And if you can and that works for you, that's great. But folks who are really intimidated by um, or just can't afford to buy really big sets or would rather have higher quality products, um, but can't afford as many of them. So maybe just a couple of tubes of a higher quality paint versus 36 tubes of, you know, the store brand um, paints that might, you know, that work great for a beginner, but eventually you get frustrated with, or it's hard to get as saturated or detailed, or not detailed, as saturated, really. That's the biggest issue. Um, or they're a little chalky. Uh, you can, if you take the time to just do a little color mixing, you can buy just four or five paints to really, really have a wide range of colors. Um, so if that's what you can do, then go for it. Okay. So this fella in front, I think I'm going to make him like a dark, deep brown. So let's go back to Quadacridone Magenta. So I made a purple, but I'm gonna add lots of yellow to it. So I get a much, and more magenta to it. So it's more like a, there we go. A nice reddish brown, but dark. That is, ooh, I don't know, I should have swatched these, but that's gonna be my cap for this one. The underside I'm probably gonna do in a very light tan as well as the stem, so the top is gonna be very contrasty to the bottom being the darkest color. Now I didn't give this scene or anything like a true light source, so I'm just kind of making everything towards the top a little lighter and towards the bottom a little darker. We're gonna revisit this one, it's very flat, but. All right, so the underneath, I want to be a very light version of this color. So I just pulled some over here, add lots and lots of water. I actually want it to be grayed out a little. So this has a lot of red tones to it and the complementary color, if you haven't watched my other color mixing videos, I highly recommend. Um, and there's one in this journal series, several back if you look at the playlist. So if it's too red, I need to add green and you get green by mixing blue and yellow. And that will, whoops, gray it out. There we go. Okay, that's taking a little of the red out of it. I added a lot of blue. And we're getting very gray. Okay, I kind of like that though. I kind of like super gray. Let's start with that. I'm gonna start at the juncture here where they meet, where it will be the darkest. Rinse off my brush. And just kind of spread that out. My, the top of my mushroom is still wet, so I do have to be a little careful. All right, and then this part here, closest to like the underneath, is probably gonna be in shadow. And then part of it is kind of fleshy white and gray, so just leaving a few white specks in there. Mushrooms always are a little dirty, a little funky, have a little 
few weird marks on them. I'm just throwing in little dollops of the brown from the top. And I'm going to let that dry and see what we get. This is a little too perfect of a shape there. Let's mess that up. All right, so as we let these dry, let's go back to our yellow mushroom. And then we could always add some grass in here. We can make some green uh, to kind of make things pop a little bit more. All right, so I just took this brown color I made, added a little more yellow, and I'm going to use that for some of the details on this. Oh, I have a water spot up here. All right, I'm being a little dramatic here. Rinse off my brush, I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm going to blend these out with just a damp brush and water. And then what am I doing with these little warty things? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to put shadows around the bottoms of them. Am I leaving them white? They don't quite look done white. Thinking about it, thinking about it. I guess I could make them dark. Well, we got to let those dry to see how that looks. Let's make some green. And actually, as this is drying, I'm going to add a little darker color in here. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. That gives it just a little more oomph. Contrast. These guys up here, taking some of that gray that I had, that purpley gray. Okay, let's make some green. Good news is I use Thalo Blue. And I used, make sure that's in here, a nice rich yellow. This will make a lovely green. And if it's too bright of a green, just add a little magenta. And that will desaturate it just enough. All right, this is a beautiful olivey green. I'm going to lighten it up a little and put a little bit of a ground line here. You know, I'm going to throw some brown in there because a forest floor isn't always super grassy. It's got some browns in it. And then I'm going to add some texture, some vertical texture that looks like grass. And you can put it right in front of. And this is still wet on wet. If you want it to show up more um, strongly, you just have to let this dry a little bit. I'm going to do a little of it this way, and then I'll add another layer once it's dry. All right. We're going to do these darker. So again, magenta, yellow, make a rich orange. And then 
add some purple to it, which is just a combination of blue and magenta. Just add a little blue and it starts to make it. So let's, I don't know how, if this is still wet, but we're going to go for it. I'm going to leave some little white spots, I think, on a few of them. There we go. Yeah, that gives it some contrast, some depth. All right, just waiting for this to dry a little bit to add some final layers of texture. At this point, if you wanted your grass to be even a little darker, more olivey, you could add a little Payne's gray. I know that's not one of our primary colors, but most people will have some kind of black or neutral or Payne's gray in their palette as well as their three primary colors. So that would be my recommendation. Again, it's still a little wet at the bottom, but I kind of like that diffused look. Let's hit it with the dryer real quick. We can put on some more vertical texture, some grass that will kind of stay in place. You could use a smaller brush for this. Notice how um, I'm right up on the tip, the way I hold my brush is right up on the tip, and I use my fingers as like a hinge, a swinging hinge. I don't use my whole arm to do this. Um, Sometimes those basic like understanding brush techniques and like the versatility of your brush and your hand, the way you hold it can make a big difference. You don't have to make every stroke the same. Use the side of my brush. I'm gonna actually introduce some more of this brown color here using the side of my brush and getting some of that dry brushing texture. And I'm using very light pressure. Your pressure makes a lot of difference too when you're going back in to do fine details or to add to a layer on top. If you're really pressing really hard, you're moving things a lot more than I'm very light, light texture. All right, I think we're done. There's our little mushroom trio, or actually it's got more than three in it now with these baby ones. Um, okay, so thank you so much for watching and joining me on this little mushroom adventure. Uh, I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check out the description uh, for links to what are my links to? Links to supplies and materials, as well as my Instagram account. And uh, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet. And happy painting, you all. Thanks for joining me. And I'll see you for our next watercolor journal video. Take care, y'all.